Roughly eight years ago, Audi finally entered the ever-growing subcompact luxury SUV space with the Audi Q3. Now at the time, the Q3 was so old that it was already technically over five years old when it finally showed up in the US back in 2015. Now thankfully, Audi saw that and they introduced a fully redesigned second generation model back in 2019. You guys have seen me show you guys a full review on that vehicle about three years ago. But as you can see this week, Audi has loaned me this 2023 Audi Q3 45 TFSI. It's the most powerful version that you can get here in the US. And this premium plus trim has all of the necessary tech and luxury features that a lot of buyers demand, especially when you want a bigger Audi SUV, but your uh, lifestyle requires you to have a smaller one. So if you guys have always been in the market for a small Q3, but you weren't really sure if this is still the best option to buy, how does this latest 2023 model stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, the Audi Q3 was fully redesigned back in 2019, and here in America, Audi continues to offer this with only two powertrain options. In the other markets, they offer it with uh, several high-performance variants, a diesel variant, but here in the US, we just have two different versions of a turbocharged four-cylinder. Now, this model that I'm showing you is known as the 45 TFSI. It technically has a two liter turbo direct injection uh, four cylinder uh, that offers up to 228 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. This engine is kind of a variation of the same engine that we find in the Volkswagen GTI and GLI. It technically has the lower output numbers from the GLI though. There's also a 40 TFSI, which makes around 184 horsepower and 221 pound feet of torque. So you get nearly four 45 more horsepower when you go for the 45 TFSI model. I highly recommend stepping up to this powertrain. Uh, it's all going out through an eight speed torque converter automatic. So Audi uh, decided to get rid of the dual clutch from the prior generation. They still offer a dual clutch in the European market, but here in the US, it has a torque converter automatic. Quattro all wheel drive is gonna be standard and fuel economy is rated at 21 in the city, 28 on the highway. This is actually designed to run on regular gas. It has about a 16 gallon fuel tank. So it doesn't require you to put premium, which is nice. Uh, Audi says zero to 60 is around 7.1 seconds. It'll reach a top speed of around 130 miles an hour. And the curb weight of this model here is just over 3,900 pounds. But let's go ahead and close up the hood and talk about the exterior styling. Now, uh, this was all new back in 2019. So Audi has not given this car a uh, significant mid-cycle refresh just yet. It's probably coming, however, for the 2023 model year. But you can see this car adopted a lot of the kind of Q8 design cues when they introduced this model back in 2019. You can see Audi's corporate single frame grille is loud and proud here front and center in this vehicle. It's missing the black optics package. My particular tester is Kronos gray on the outside. It has the S line sport package, but I would probably spec in for around 1700 bucks, I think is what the charge was for the black optics package. We'll black out the chrome trim. You can see Audi's full LED headlights are now standard for 2023. These are uh, LED daytime running lights, LED turn signals, LED low and high beams. You have active weather lights as well. And then down here, you can see no actual fog lights. These are some fake vents here. You have some well-integrated parking sensors. My tester also has Audi's full 360 camera. Uh, that's part of a technology package. Again, you can black out the chrome satin silver accents in the grill if you'd like with that block optics package. This Kronos gray is certainly a nice exterior color option. It does make this car look a little bit dull. However, it's a little bit too conservative and kind of blend into the crowd. But some of you may like that. It definitely has kind of like that corporate Audi SUV look but it's just in a much smaller package. Now, speaking of the size here, this vehicle at 176.6 inches long is about 10 inches shorter than most of the compact or midsize-ish SUVs. Its wheelbase is 105.6. Audi actually lengthened the car by about four inches in the overall length and three inches in the wheelbase when they went to this second generation model. So it was a pretty significant jump in size, but it's still a small vehicle. You can see the wheels. My tester has a 19 inch wheel that's part of an extra charge uh, it's riding on 235.50 R19 all-season Continental tires. The front brakes are 13.3 inches in the front with a single piston floating caliper design. And then the rear brakes are uh, a 12.2 inch rotor. You have four wheel independent suspension. Uh, my tester uh, doesn't have, or Audi doesn't offer adaptive dampers nor an air suspension. Remember, this is at the pretty uh, low end of the totem pole in terms of the lineup. You can see S-Line Sport Package is standard on the 45 TS FSI. You have uh, integrated turn signal mirrors here, this chrome trim. You can also black out with the black optics package. All Q3s 
I believe comes standard with the panoramic roof with these uh, low profile uh, uh, roof rails at the top, which is definitely nice. And overall, I think the silhouette of the Q3 is still nice. Again, just a little bit too restrained. I would really love to see them offer a high performance SQ3 or the RSQ3 that they offer in, the, in other markets, but sadly, that still is not here in the US. Now you can see the rear, you also have their full LED tail lights with dynamic turn signals. You can see LED reverse lights, which is nice no visible exhaust tips. That's That trend's kind of going away with everybody going toward electrification. Remember, this is the lowest end of Audi's SUV portfolio. And then opening up the cargo area, you can see power lift gates included as well, and you get just under 24 cubic feet of storage space, which is pretty good. Uh, here in the US, we only get the regular Q3. In other markets, they offer a sport back, which offers that slopey uh, slant here roof, which will reduce the cargo even further. Underneath here, you can see there is a temporary spare tire, so you don't have to deal with a fix-a-flat. And there's also a little bit of storage. If you fold down that second row seat, there's no third row in this vehicle. Audi says it'll expand out uh, to just over 56 cubic feet, which is pretty good. Not quite as spacious, however, as some of the other competitors in this segment. So the outside of the 2023 Q3 hasn't changed since the full redesign, but let's go ahead and take a look at the interior. Uh, the first thing I want to show you guys is the key fob. You can see, unlike other Audi models, the Q3 technically uses an older fob with a switchblade style key, which is funny because this car does have their Intelligent Access Smart Key. It's included on the Premium Plus trim, so you don't even need the switchblade part. But if you guys like this older style key, the Q3 obviously is still the one to get with that. You have usual buttons, lock, unlock, open up the trunk, and panic. Uh, but with the smart key system, you basically just come up, you can touch the door handle here. You can also uh, uh, set the mirrors to electrically fold in, which is definitely nice. I suspect if you guys have access to the smartphone app, you should be able to remote start and lock and unlock this vehicle as well. Now, opening up the door, you can see the Kronos gray exterior of my tester is complemented by this Opaki, I'm probably mispronouncing it, uh, brown leather interior. The seats are three level here and you have a 10-way, or I'm sorry, a 12-way power adjustable driver's seat with four-way lumbar. You also have two-person memory that's included with the Prestige or the Premium Plus trim. And then my tester also has the 15-speaker Sonos 680-watt premium sound system, which it's interesting how Audi's going to a Sonos. They used to do Bang & Olufsen, but it sounds really good. I love Sonos speakers in my home. Uh, looking at the door panel, you can see this has a slightly padded soft-touch injection uh, molded plastic material, real aluminum trim that has has a really interesting design into the door handle. This right here, however, is just silver painted plastic. Uh, they should have done real aluminum here or at least stitched this in leather. You can see there is leather stitching here and along this door panel here. Uh, but remember, this is the least expensive model in the Audi SUV portfolio. Down here, you can see it's all hard touch plastic. You have some um, storage over there. Open up the trunk is right here. And then you have two person memory, like I said. No ventilated seats, Audi doesn't offer that. And then no heated steering wheel. I, also couldn't find that in my particular tester. So that's a little annoying to see the lack of those features uh, in a premium vehicle, even though this is Audi's smallest car now. Being an SUV, this has a slightly raised up seating position. It feels more like an SUV versus the Mercedes-Benz GLA. It feels similar to the BMW X1 as I get in and shut the door. This is built on the latest MQB architecture and it has a nice solid sounding thunk when you shut the door. Now starting the vehicle up, the start stop button is right here. It's not blocked by the steering wheel, which is nice. And then when you start the vehicle up, you can see the mirrors will unfold themselves and it has the typical Audi chime. And then my tester has the technology package. So we have a 12.3 inch virtual cockpit display along with a 10.1 inch Audi virtual display here, their infotainment system system Audi calls it MMI. It has Apple CarPlay, which is wireless along with Android Auto. And you can see my phone connected to it pretty quickly. Uh, I've had uh, a mixed bag with the system in other Audis where sometimes it doesn't connect to my phone. However, it's been working pretty well in my weeks worth of testing with this car. Uh, so that's good to see. In terms of the materials on the dash, you can see this is a soft touch injection molded plastic, slightly padded. Um, you can get more wood trim on this portion here. Without the wood, it kind of has like this texturized plastic. You have some aluminum trim here, along with some silver painted plastic, some piano black plastic trim. This actually lights up at night, which looks good along with the rest of the ambient lighting. For an entry level car, the ambient and lighting looks good. You have dual zone automatic climate control, three level heated seats with again, satisfying 
clicky buttons, which people love about Audis. The steering wheel, you can see, is actually a pretty large diameter. I'm surprised to see that it is so big. I would have liked to see a flat bottom wheel, although my tester is missing the black optics package. I'm not sure if they include a different steering wheel in that model. You can see there's paddles on the wheel. There's controls for the virtual cockpit here where you can basically change the way the gauge function looks. You can put your GPS in here, uh, which looks amazing. You can also put your audio information. You can also change the different layout of this. This is the sport layout. You can also go to a dynamic or a classic layout. Uh, the steering wheel itself is a manual tilt and telescoping adjustment with a good amount of adjustability and range. Uh, you have your cruise control controls down here for the Audi Adaptive Cruise with traffic jam assist. You can also control your volume here. The horn sounds good. It doesn't sound puny, which is what I expect to find in most small vehicles. Uh, and then down here, you can see your drive mode selector is right here. Audi offers five different drive modes and off-road comfort, auto dynamic and individual. Off-road mode is probably all gonna be software. This vehicle does not have uh, an air suspension where it will raise up the ground clearance. If I put the vehicle into reverse, my tester with the tech package also includes a full 360 camera, as you can see, really great views. You can also change the views if you'd like uh, and give you like a full top-down 360 view. You can also give a front view. You can also do a 360 perimeter scan. So again, really nice uh, camera. It looks really great great resolution and quality. Uh, and then this system here is relatively easy to navigate and use. It also has, of course, navigation with the Audi Google Earth display, which right now I have it turned off to not show the actual Google Earth maps, uh, which requires a data connection. Now over here, you can see all Q3s come standard with wireless phone charging uh, for 2023, which is nice. Uh, a lot more buttons over here again for your stability control system, auto start stop, downhill assist control, parking sensor defeat button over here, and then this controls the eight-speed automatic. I like how it's a traditional shifter with a manual mode and an actual sport mode in the transmission. You have two USB-C charging ports right there, which you can connect via your smartphone or phone or use the wireless app, uh, wireless connection. You can see electronic parking brake here. Nice cup holder area with a 12-volt power outlet. This padded armrest right here you can see is adjustable. It also slides forward and back. You have a pretty good amount of storage in the center console, which is nice. The seats, uh, they feel pretty high quality and they're comfortable. They just don't really hug you in place very nicely. Uh, I would like to see again, Audi offer a cooled seat function, but they don't. There's also a, a 10 way power driver passenger seat. I'm sorry, a 10 way power passenger seat that complements the 12 way power driver's seat. You can see the glove compartment is a pretty large glove compartment. It's damped and it's lined with felt. You have an auto dimming rear view mirror, but Audi doesn't offer a digital camera rear view mirror. And then above me here, you can see big panoramic sunroof with a sliding sunshade, which also allows you to tilt or open it up. It only opens up over the two front or over the front seats, obviously, but it's nice that Audi gives this to you as standard. A lot of competitors make you pay extra for it. So overall, the front seat is definitely still full of most of the tech that you'd want, minus like a heads up display. It has good space in here. Uh, it has premium materials and whatnot, and the seats are pretty comfortable. But let's go ahead and hop into the second row because this is still an SUV, so you expect it to be a practical family car. You can see getting back here, the space is around 36 inches of legroom, which isn't much. You can see that's with the front passenger seat all the way back. This is where I have the driver's seat for my driving position. Back here on the door panels, you can see it's a slightly padded, very slightly padded soft touch injection molded plastic. Same materials with the leather here, but silver along this portion, but aluminum there. Uh, and then these seats, they do fold down and they also offer a recline function. And the interesting thing as well, you can actually slide these seats forward and back, which is kind of hard to do when you are holding a camera, but you can see the seat slid forward there, push it back here, it slides back. So you can kind of give yourself more cargo space or more uh, passenger space. But once I get back here, you can see the space is not bad. For somebody my height, I'm five foot seven, and there's a pretty good amount of leg room, uh, which is nice. There is the recline function for the seats, like I said earlier. Uh, you have two uh, air vents back here, which is nice, along with your own kind of climate control vent. You can see you can actually go into like a warm or a cool right here. It has its own climate function. It's manual though. And then you have two USB-C charging ports, a power outlet here, uh, and then you have two storage pockets along with an armrest that folds down that gives you two cup holders which is pretty nice. So overall, in terms of the backseat space, it's about on par with the class, but just keep in mind, this class isn't exactly known for having a generous backseat. 
So it's been a couple years since I've been behind the wheel of Audi's baby SUV. I was at the media launch for this vehicle way back in 2018. So it's been almost four years or a little over four years, almost five since Audi introduced this car. So it's probably due for a refresh soon. But regardless, this is the best selling vehicle in the segment. Audi outsold its competitors two to one. So Audi obviously must be doing something right with the latest generation Q3. And even though it's not the most exciting choice, the one that we're driving here is the 45 TFSI model, which means we have more power, up to 228 horsepower. This is essentially the same engine that you'll find in the Volkswagen Jetta GLI, um, with, of course, a different transmission. This has an eight-speed torque converter automatic here in the US, but I've never zero to 60 tested this vehicle. Let's go ahead and try it out. It's in sport mode. We'll brake torque it. Feels good off the line. The engine also likes to rev. The eight-speed auto shifts smoothly. 0 to 60 in 6.65 seconds, which is about a half a second quicker than Audi's claim of 7.1. And 6.65 is perfectly acceptable. I mean, I've tested the BMW X1. It was getting around the same time, I believe. The BMW might be a little bit quicker, actually. Um, and then, of course, I haven't driven the latest Lexus UX in a little bit. It's It only comes as a hybrid. That's going to be significantly slower. And then, of course, there's the Mercedes-Benz GLA, which I have driven. Uh, but Mercedes is the only one that offers like a full-on high-performance version, which I really would love Audi to do an RS Q3 or a, an a SQ3. But let's go ahead and try it one more time here because I want to see what we can get on this little stretch here. We'll brake torque it again. There's a little bit of turbo lag off the line, but once the turbo kicks in, the engine feels pretty strong. 7.05 seconds there, and this is with it going slightly more uphill. So uh, our first stretch of 6.65 on a level, almost level surface, pretty good acceleration. It's gonna be quick enough for most people. This engine has a very nice, flexible character. It has lots of low end grunt. It also revs pretty well. It revs pretty strongly up to its 6,500 or 6,900 RPM red line. Um, the engine just has a little bit of turbo lag off the line, but you know what? Most people aren't gonna drive the vehicle the way I just did. I only do that for demonstration purposes. And when the transmission is in its uh, basic, uh, basic drive mode, I noticed that the eight speed is a little bit slow to let go of its uh, top gears. But other than that, you just feel really good mid-range. Anytime the engine goes above 3000 RPM, uh, the vehicle surges forward with very little fuss and it feels like it has a lot of low end grunt to where you're not where you don't feel like you have to push this engine and when you do it makes a good noise it doesn't sound horrible it doesn't sound overworked or taxed and in terms of the handling this is the latest mqb architecture it's kind of i want to say in between the platform of the mark 7 and mark 8 gti the mark 8 technically just came out but the steering is relatively sharp and precise the Suspension also is definitely tuned for more of a comfort feel, which is fine given the mission of the Q3. Uh, and the Quattro all-wheel drive system is standard. And it does a really good job of putting the power to the wheels to get the, or to get the vehicle moving. It is uh, one of the best all-wheel drive systems in the business. No, obviously no active torque differential whatnot. That's not the mission of a regular Q3. The mission is to just drive this vehicle normally uh, and you know, on your daily day-to-day -day task through inclement weather, but this vehicle will hold its own when you put it into its dynamic mode. Now, kind of just driving here on this pavement or on the straight road, um, the ride quality is comfortable. The quietness is also good. The visibility is excellent. The eight-speed auto, you know, if you drive the vehicle in seven tenths day-to-day -day driving, it goes about with very little fuss. I think it's a good idea. It was a good decision for Audi to put a torque converter automatic in this car versus the dual clutch that you found in the prior generation or in Europe because it's just a lot smoother in day-to-day -day driving. There's none of that shuddery feel that typically Audi Volkswagen uh, does a really good DSG, but you can't get, a, get away from the fact that dual clutches just aren't going to be as smooth as a torque convert automatic in day-to-day -day traffic. Uh, but overall, I'm very impressed. Everything that I like about the bigger Audi SUVs is present in here. You have a solid build quality. You have a good ride quality. You have a flexible and willing powertrain. You have good visibility. You have good driver assistance tech, although this doesn't have the latest in Audi software because this is, again, a car that's probably due for a refresh. Uh, and in terms of the steering feel and handling, it's fine. It's uh, 
relatively quick and precise, not really much in terms of road feel, but I would have to compare the, this car back to back with the just redesigned BMW X1 to be certain, but the Beamer is a good car. It is definitely gonna be the one to beat. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Audi and BMW trading, you know, jabs at each other on who's gonna be the best seller for the 2023 or 2024 model year. Uh, but, you know, this is the best selling car and it's not surprising to me. In my week's worth of testing as well, I wanna mention the fuel economy, even though the EPA numbers aren't wonderful, 21, 28 MPG, I averaged just over 26 MPG in my week's worth of testing. That is on regular gas as well. You don't have to put premium in this vehicle. Uh, and it was showing around 370 miles on a full tank. So again, relatively efficient car to live with on a daily basis. It has a 16 gallon fuel tank. So you're not gonna be spending you know, too much at the pump to fill this car up depending on how much gas is. Would it be wonderful if Audi offered a hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, a high-performance version? Sure. I really think that Audi is kind of missing out, but they also probably want to keep the price low on this vehicle. They don't want to you know, intrude on sales of the Q5. And then there's also the all-electric Q4, which is technically based on the uh, Volkswagen ID4 platform. It's an all-electric skateboard platform. But there is still plenty to like about the latest Q3. It, the only problem is, is Audi doesn't really offer an option for enthusiasts, at least not in the US. But for those of you who just want a small baby Audi SUV that doesn't break the bank, that has plenty of acceleration, plenty of technology, a decent amount of space inside as well, uh, it's pretty hard to beat the overall value that Audi offers with the latest generation Q3. So when the second generation Q3 came out back in 2019, technically its main rival, the BMW X1, was the best-selling vehicle. BMW sold almost 30,000 units back in 2018. However, the tables have turned and Audi has done something right, obviously, because Audi sold nearly 35,000 of these in 2021. It outsold all of its rivals basically two to one uh, compared to vehicles like the BMW X1, the Volvo XC40, the Lexus UX, and the Mercedes-Benz GLA. So clearly, even though Audi doesn't offer very many variants of this model, like a high performance version or an electrified version, buyers are snatching this car up. And after spending a week driving the 2023 model, it's pretty easy to see why. Because if you guys like their bigger offerings like the Q5, the Q7, the Q8, Audi has essentially captured all of that magic into a smaller package. The ride and handling is very premium and upscale. It's comfortable, uh, it's well made. The interior technology in this vehicle, while Audi's tech is certainly starting to get a little bit dated, it still works extremely well. It's still very impressive looking and everything just has a high quality, well-engineered tactile feel. The back seat offers a decent amount of space. I mean, this segment isn't known for a big back seat or cargo area. It's about on par with all of its rivals. Uh, the handling is sporty-ish, but more on the lines of comfortable, which is what most buyers are gonna want. And the beauty about the Q3 is it's extremely well-priced because this car starts at around $39,200 plus destination charge. If you guys want the premium plus trim, which I highly recommend. It throws in the Sonos sound system, uh, the uh, larger virtual cockpit display, uh, the wireless phone charging, the 360 camera, the adaptive cruise. That's about $3,300 extra. So uh, you're going to be looking at around $43,500 for this model to start. My tester, of course, with a couple of options that it has, the Kronos Gray, the upgraded brown interior, the technology package for $2,700 that gives you the full virtual cockpit 12 inch display. This model here stickers for around 47,795, including destination. So just under 48 grand makes this car a really good deal in the segment. I mean, if you look at competitors like the Mercedes-Benz GLA, um, it is gonna be a little bit more. The Volvo XC40 is gonna be around the same price. The new BMW X1 is gonna be a little bit more expensive, but I'd also say that that model is the one to beat because BMW did a really good job with the redesign. And then of course, there's the Lexus UX, which is uh, the only model that comes as a hybrid in the segment, I believe for now, but it also is significantly less powerful and it has less interior space. So the Audi Q3 is an extremely well-rounded vehicle and it's easily one of my favorites if you're going to be looking in the subcompact luxury SUV space. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2023 Audi Q3. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.